His birthday is July 11th, guys, so we'll see. Can mommy get this up before your first birthday? Today is June 14th. It could happen. So I'm gonna get these in the oven now, and we still have a whole bunch of the mixture left. So here are how the 48 mini meatloaves all turned out. Hey friends, I am back with another big, hopefully two-day, large family freezer cooking session. Uh, it's always so fun when we edit these videos and go back through. And uh, I have all these plans and dreams and ways that uh, I think that my cooking times will work. And because we only live real life around here, things don't always go as planned. So uh, it's always like you don't know the end from the beginning. But I always plan a lot of food, buy a lot of food. A lot of times I'll end up making more than I planned or I end up adding in some extra recipes and we just uh, work with it all. Now my baby is crying but daddy is back there with him so he'll be settled here in a moment. They just got back from running a lot of errands and uh, everyone's everyone's tired now. All that to say I'm going to show you what my list is kind of let you know what we have going on around here. So jumping right in I will show you my overall plan is we are going to do a whole bunch of chicken pot pies, mini meatloaves, vegetable soup, manicotti, sauce sausage and rice casserole, or we call it a bake, tortellini and sausage soup, baked chicken spaghetti, pizza casserole. This one's fun because it's with some zucchini. I also like to shred squash with it, but then that didn't come through with my Walmart grocery order. So we'll just do zucchini, some orange sesame chicken, and baked egg rolls. Now of this list of 10 meals I'm going to do, two of these are low carb. So for my trim healthy mama ladies or low carb or keto followers, these mini meatloaves and this pizza casserole roll should be able to check both of those boxes. The rest of these are just a whole lot of big family meals. I'm also, of course, at the end, follow through. It'll probably be on a day two video, and I'll have the final total. And I put in a separate grocery haul this time just for my freezer meals so I could let you know the cost breakdown. And I've got a little running list. My plan for today, it's 1.36 around here. So I'm just getting rolling. Nothing is prepped. And so I made myself my little list. I'm going to get the sauce sausage, chicken, and ground beef cooking, and then I'm going to get the soups going on the stove. We're going to cook rice, we're going to cook all the noodles, I'm going to then do the mini meatloaves, do the pot pies, do the manicotti, the sausage and rice bake, baked chicken spaghetti, the pizza casserole with zucchini, orange sesame chicken, and baked egg rolls. It's just kind of like my little running list. Also, some new toys that I got whenever I did my Walmart grocery order. I got this eight cup food processor. This was only about $35. They also had a Cuisinart model that was $99. I was tempted to get that one because I had it in my budget to do so. But then I got looking that the Black & Decker, let's see here. Okay, so this is 450 watt power motor. And the Cuisinart was only a 350 watt power motor. So I bought this one, number one, it was a lot less expensive. And so I could spend that little extra part of the budget on something else. And uh, it's more powerful. So Travis wasn't home, but I sent him a message and he said to go with the 450 watt. So I had a food processor many, many years ago. I think I spent like 60 some dollars on it. And it seemed like in six months or so, I had burned the thing up. So I thought we would just give it another go. And since this one was a $35 price, I thought we could certainly give it a try, see how long it takes me to break it. And then this is just another like Walmart brand, the Hamilton Beach. Um, I've heard good things about these little multi-tool hand mixers, especially whenever um, doing large batches, doing different things that you can't necessarily easily get a hand mixer in. I just thought it would be another fun kitchen tool to try. And this one was under $20. So we will see how it goes. I just wanted this part, but it, I came with the whisk attachment as well. So not sure exactly at the moment how or if we're even going to use these in our prepping today. I've got a lot of things already like frozen vegetables and already shredded cheese and such. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. So the first thing that I'm going to go to do right now to get this show on the road is to go pull all my meat and get it cooking. And then once the meat is cooking, I'll mentally feel like I can do the next thing. What you got, Daniel Joel? Popsicle. You've been hanging out on the new hammocks and playing? Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, and you got Marshall. Okay, mm -hmm. go get Daddy. Go play. So checking in here, mass cooking meat-wise, I've got 
bunch of frozen chicken breasts in my 14 quart pressure cooker and a whole bunch over here in my instant pot and then here on the stove I have nine pounds of sausage going with some green onions and then over in my microwave I got a bunch of ground beef going I'm now to the point where I'm gonna start getting some of my two of my soups going so this is the quinoa tortellini and sausage soup gonna get the quinoa boil it over on my stove right now and I just went ahead and added in two cups of shredded carrots in to the, the ground sausage that I'm cooking on the stovetop here because this sausage is going to be used in the quinoa and tortellini sausage soup and it's also going to be used in a sausage bake and this will soften up the carrots and uh, that would kind of be a, a two for one special. Go ahead and get this beef broth going in a stock pot and also a can of crushed tomatoes and just a can of tomato sauce. Then we'll add in the other ingredient. There are, this was two cups of dried quinoa now cooked and I'm gonna put that in the big stock pot for the soup. And this pressure cooker is done, so I'm gonna pull this chicken out. Okay, a little check-in. I've got an armful of tortellinis here. I'm gonna add these to the soup because right now I've been crossing stuff off. Sausage is cooked, chicken's cooked, the soup is cooking. I'm just on step two, adding the tortellinis in. Next, I think I'm gonna actually start working on the mini meatloaves because I have the meat for that ready. And then I'll check back in with this list. Also, time is now 3.47. So here is how this soup is looking. Again, everything is in it now. You can see the quinoa's in it, sausage is in it carrots, green beans, all the other ingredients. So now I'm just going to put the tortellinis in here for about five to seven minutes and then we'll start to let it cool. You can customize it to accommodate your family. I put a little over two pounds of tortellinis in here and it looks perfect. You can also, you can add more or less. Also, if you want to stretch your stock pot of soup, you can add more water to this. Or if you're using a bigger stock pot, uh, in here, I could probably get about another four to eight cups of water if I wanted to, but I think I'm gonna leave well enough alone for the moment. So it's almost four now. I'm gonna go take a break with Mr. Benjamin. Also probably feed him some applesauce and uh, some other goodies that we can find because he's eaten all kinds of things now. And then I'll get back into the freezer cook and hustler. So in handling all of this meat, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a scratch in my throat. I've been eating pork rinds, but they're low carb, so that's okay. <laughs> anyway, to, um, to let you all know some of the ways that I handle all of this meat that I feel that I handle on my freezer cooking days. Like right now, <coughs> I'm gonna cough again. Right now I have quite a bit of chicken breast done. So I've let them cool to room temperature. I've now put them in baggies. I'm gonna put them in one of my refrigerators until I can circle back around to actually use those. Like I know I'm doing a chicken pot pie and I would bake chick uh, chicken spaghetti bake, etc. What I'm getting ready to do now are the mini meatloaf. So I'm gonna set the chicken aside, but that is at least done now. So here are some of the chicken I'm gonna set outside. And then also, I say set outside, I'll explain that here in a minute. What used to be our kitchen refrigerator is still outside on our back deck. Again, super, super classy, but temperatures are holding well, it's doing well. Still don't have the spot cleared for it in our garage since we got our uh, brand new dream refrigerator, but it's gonna happen. Travis has like two more things on his truck project to do, and then we'll be able to move a th bunch of things out of there. Another thing that's happening is next Thursday, Travis and I are finally going to Ikea to get our shelves. <laughs> we are going to do massive like dream homeschool large family bookshelves in our dining room. And because of that, I'm going to then get back like six of my kitchen cabinets that I have never had ever since we moved in. So that is gonna give me more room for pots, pans, gadgets, and such, and all of my homeschool things that are have temporarily been housed in my kitchen cabinets are gonna get their new home. 
So all of that is helping with the uh, appliance and furniture and uh, stuff swirl going on at our house. So I'm working on my mini meatloafs now. And these are my new muffin tins I got. So I can do 48 of various things all at one time. This is everything all dumped in my big 30 quart bowl. Gonna mix it with my hands now and then fill these muffin cups about half full each. Get them in the oven and uh, probably show you some more of the process along the way. So here is how the two big pans of the mini meatloafs. Look, once they're all filled, there's Mr. Benjamin still, you supervising? Hey, are you out of your snack? Uh, yeah, yes. So I'm gonna get these in the uh, oven now, and we still have a whole bunch of the mixture left. So here is how the quinoa, tortellini, and sausage soup turned out. It is uh, what I'm going to eat right now while I work on the next recipe. So the 14 quart pressure cooker is now done. I had put about nine pounds of frozen chicken thighs in here. And we're gonna use this for our orange sesame chicken that we will be doing as a freezer meal. Right now I am just scooping out all of the chicken thighs from the pressure cooker. I have quite a bit of broth in here and quite a bit of broth in my other pressure cooker that I just got done cooking another batch of boneless skinless chicken breast. So I'm going to also cool and freeze this broth. So I don't think I have any recipes this go round where um, I call for broth. I think my other soup recipe that I'm going to do also uses beef broth. I'll have to check my little notebook again and see. But anyway, I don't want all this broth to go to waste. So I'll definitely freeze it for another time. So there is our pipe and hot bowl of chicken thighs that are just super hot right now. There's the broth. So I'm gonna get this broth cooling as well. Chicken broth going in. So you can see from all that chicken cooking, we got about six quarts of chicken broth. So here are how the 48 mini meatloaves all turned out, but oven is beeping at me again. I used 93% um, lean ground beef, and so that is why these are not like drowning in their own grease. The leaner the ground beef that you can get in your budget, the better when it comes to mass cooking. So there's my pile of the first 48 mini meatloaves. Obviously at mealtime, the kids can top these with ketchup or barbecue sauce or whatever. But um, yeah, there they are. Aren't they cute? Now I'm gonna do 48 more. So what I'm working on now is getting the quinoa and tortellini sausage soup into these plastic containers to then get it into the freezer. And it'll be perfect meals for weeks and months to come. So I'm just gonna scoop the soup in here. I'm not gonna fill it all the way to the top because we need to leave room for the soup to expand while the liquids freeze. So I'm gonna fill it about to there or so. Now I'll tell you the truth. What I ordered on Amazon when I ordered these containers, they're supposed to be freezer safe, have little lids with them. I ordered 64 ounce containers. However, I looked at these and I'm like, there's no way this is a 64 ounce container. So it ended up fitting about six cups of water in it when I tested it. So I've been duped a little bit with what I bought, but like all things, I don't have time to get on there and order different soup containers. And um, I will get on there and I'll let them know. You all sent me the wrong size, but in the meantime, here I am with a huge stock pot of soup and everything to make another stock pot of soup. So I'm just gonna use these smaller containers for now. We are getting about four cups or so in each one. Whoop. Or actually that's probably about five cups. That's just gonna be that. And when my family, if we need this for a main dish for a meal, I'll probably set out two, well, I'll set out about three of them, I would say. It's not as hot as it was. I'm still gonna let it continue to cool a little bit before I put the lids on it and before I get it in the freezer. We got 10 32 ounce containers of our quinoa, tortellini, and sausage soup. Check in with our little handy dandy list here. Now, I have ground beef, and I got about nine pounds of ground beef in the 14 quart, and six pounds of ground beef in the eight quart pressure cooker, and then I have six pounds of ground beef in my Dutch oven on the stove. So, all that ground beef is being cooked for upcoming recipes. Um, sausage, chicken, been done on that. I'm gonna cross off my ground beef because 
that is being processed. I'm gonna cross off the mini meatloafs, even though I still probably have about 48 more of those. Next thing I wanna do is get the vegetable soup cooking because that needs time to cook and cool. I do need ground beef for that, but I could get all the other components simmering. After that, I need to cook rice and noodles. And then I'm down here to pulling together the rest of these meals. So that will, the last batch, that's gonna mean that we made 144 meatloaf minis. Meatloaf minis. Okay, so I haven't gotten that much further cooking wise, except um, I got more chicken out in the refrigerator. I got the soups put in the freezer. I bagged up the rest of the meatloaf minis. I served more meatloaf minis for dinner. I took a few minutes, which it probably ended up being 15 or 20, did a whole bunch of Insta stories. And uh, I'm looking at my list, I hadn't got any farther, but I'm gonna take Travis dinner outside and take a break and talk to him for probably another 15 and 20 or 20 minutes. And then when I come in, I must get the vegetable soup cooking and do the bulk rice and noodles and then we're gonna assess the time and the state of mama's feet. Okay, so wrapping this up for today, I have decided that is what we are doing now. The sausage was cooked. I think we cooked nine pounds of sausage. The chicken was cooked. I'm pretty sure, I have, I'd have to go back and look at my notes. Pretty sure we cooked at least 30 pounds of chicken. We did at least 20 pounds of ground beef. I also uh, made 144 of those meatloaf minis and that took 18 pounds of lean ground beef and we made a whole lot of that quinoa tortellini sausage soup and right now i'm getting ready to put into the containers is another big stock pot of the vegetable beef soup i also got done all of my boxes of the manicotti noodles and in my 14 quart go wise pressure cooker i also have all of the brown rice that i need for tomorrow so the meat is done it's in the refrigerator the noodles and the rice will be going in next. The soup will be going in the freezer. And uh, I'm doing some cleanup now. That's it for today. Tomorrow, I'll show you my little list here. So tomorrow, here's all of our lovely, oh, we got things checked off. So tomorrow we'll be doing the chicken pot pies, the manicotti, the sausage and rice bake, bake chicken spaghetti, that pizza casserole, orange sesame chicken, and baked egg rolls. So I got about eight hours in today. Don't know how long it'll take me tomorrow, probably another eight hours. And we'll count up all the meals at the end. So that's it, friends, for my big, large family freezer meals prep day. Take one. Tomorrow, I'll be assembling a bunch more meals. And now that I have all the meat and et cetera's done today, gonna make my time easier tomorrow. I am going to uh, chill and watch some House Hunters now and enjoy a, a Halo Top pretend ice cream and call it a day. So I'll see you real soon with day number two and next time with another brand new video. Bye-bye.